Stretching from Great Falls, Montana, the Alaska-Siberia Air Route runs nearly 6,000 miles through Canada, Alaska, across the Bering Sea to Siberia, and on to central Russia. In one of the great logistical efforts of the 20th century and a major turning point of World War II, this secret program was developed to transport nearly 8,000 military aircraft and other supplies to the former Soviet Union. For over 70 years, the story of the thousands of men and women across three nations who suffered great hardships in an effort to save the world has remained untold. Until now. In numbers, Russian Soviet Air Force was the largest in the world. Uh, maybe not the most advanced in the world, but it was the largest in the numbers. And uh, uh, more than 50% of the Soviet airplanes were destroyed by you know, German forces uh, in the first two weeks. We must be the great arsenal of democracy. For us, this is an emergency as serious as war itself. Uh, one of the great unsung secret weapons of World War II was the Lend-Lease program. Uh, had it not been for Lend-Lease, uh, the British Commonwealth, and in particular the Soviet Union, would have been hard pressed to be able to equip their armed forces with modern, highly technical uh, aircraft especially uh, to combat the very advanced forces of both Germany and Japan. The United States and uh, Soviet uh, authorities look for uh, the practical and a good route to deliver those airplanes. The route number three was proposed by Roosevelt. That route was, you know, just a ferry airplanes, you know, from Great Falls, Montana, uh, to the Soviet Union. Just about 10,000 miles, uh, the route for the airplanes to get from the manufacturer, you know, to, to the battlefields. Few people knew about the WASP and still know about the WASP. Probably fewer even knew that they were part of this Lend-Lease program and were instrumental in getting a lot of the aircraft out of the factory in Niagara Falls and bringing them to Great Falls, Montana. There were 1,070 women Air Force service pilots and 38 of them did make it. 38 casualties among the women in you know, ferrying those planes to Great Falls. The WASP program was inextricably linked to uh, another great development of World War II that's often overlooked and that was the Ferry Command. People say, Ferry Command? What's that? Oh, well, that's, that's really one of the most essential elements of the entire wartime story, certainly an, an integral part of Lend-Lease. We had to figure out a way to move very large numbers of aircraft, extraordinarily large numbers of aircraft, from the factories to the fighting fronts. And that took very skilled, highly trained pilots. The story of the Alaska-Siberia ferry route and the delivery of nearly 8,000 warplanes from American manufacturers to the Soviet fighting front, a distance of nearly 8,000 miles, was an odyssey of flight. It was an event that was unique in aviation history. It hadn't happened before World War II, and it will probably never happen again. From 1942 to 1945, the United States, Canada, and the Soviet Union joined together as uncommon allies in what was one of the best kept secrets of World War II. Using the Alaska-Siberia air route, nearly 8,000 American warplanes were flown from Great Falls, Montana, to the Soviet Union to be used in their desperate fight against Nazi Germany.
Fly with Bravo 369 as we recreate the heart-pounding tale of America's secret transfer of military aircraft to the former Soviet Union during World War II. Using the same type of aircraft flown along the Alaska-Siberia route, we will be taking you through some of the most beautiful, rugged, and dangerous country in the world. This particular airplane used to be part of the Goldilocks acrobatic team. If you know who they are, they're, they're, they're the forerunner of the snowbirds that go, go out and put on air shows. But if you open up the Harvard book, you'll see actual pictures of this airplane. And people always ask, why the loop at the top of the stick? Well, that has a, that's a British invention. And in wartime, you're liable to have your hand injured so you couldn't grip the stick and fly, but you could put an injured limb in here and still fly. And the British adopted the system, but the Americans never did. <laughs> 